In this video, we're looking at DNA extraction from cells. Now, this doesn't just apply to DNA, it can also be applied to RNA. So it's in general nucleic acid extraction. So let's get into the video. The goal in DNA extraction or nucleic acid extraction in general is to break open cells. This involves breaking open not only the cell membrane, but also the nuclear membrane. Fun fact, Friedrich Miascher in 1869 did the first DNA isolation. There are several methods for extracting DNA or RNA from a cell, but the aim is to find a technique that gives you a decent quantity of DNA and quality of DNA. And by quality, we are referring to pure DNA that doesn't have contaminants such as RNA and proteins. And if you were looking for RNA, then a pure RNA will be one that doesn't have contaminants such as DNA and proteins. DNA and proteins or RNA and proteins are part of the cell. So your aim is to have either the pure DNA without those components or the pure RNA with are the other components that you're not interested in. Nucleic acid extraction is achieved with reagents such as detergents. These are added to a buffer to help make holes in the cell membrane. This is referred to as permeabilizing the membrane. The permeabilization process allows the contents of the cell to spill out. Once you've got spillage of the contents of the cell, you want to remove the protein fractions of the cell. And this process includes addition of, it, of protease. Now, proteases are enzymes that degrade proteins. And you also heat the lysate so that the proteins denature and become single threads of amino acids. So in this process, a reagent such as chloroform may be added for what is termed as a liquid phase extraction of the nucleic acid. And once again, nucleic acid, we are referring to DNA, RNA. The purpose or function of the chloroform is to emulsify the mixture so that we can separate it into an organic and aqueous layer. The proteins, once we've emulsified it, moves into the organic layer while the nucleic acids move into the aqueous layer on top. In between the aqueous and organic layer, you will find a thin interface which contains lipids and other insoluble matter from the cell. The aqueous layer is removed to a separate tube and ethanol is added to precipitate the DNA out of solution and concentrate it. The purpose of the ethanol or isopropanol is to reduce the solubility of the nucleic acid, allowing it to pellet out of solution when we centrifuge it. This is then followed by several wash steps with ethanol isopropanol in order to remove salts that are soluble in alcohol. Finally, the DNA is resolubilized in a small volume of molecule or double distilled water or a buffer that contains a little bit of trace and EDTA. So this allows you to have a more concentrated nucleic acid for use in other applications such as PCR sequencing or whatever you need the DNA, RNA for. But I did mention that there are several methods. And so this was just one method. And this method is actually un, you know, unsafe. Labs, certainly clinical labs, wouldn't use it because it's a very labor-intensive process, this aqueous way or liquid phase of separating out your DNA. The easier and safer method is to usually use a solid phase extraction. Here, the DNA after you lyse the cells is bound to a solid support such as silica or magnetic beads. Now, DNA adsorbs the silica beads or particles at a specific pH in the presence of specific salts, while the use of magnetic beads encourages DNA to bind reversibly to magnetic beads that are coated with DNA binding antibodies. So after this, solid support is used to bind the DNA, ethanol washes are used as you would have done if uh, in the above process if you were using the liquid phase, and this allows you to remove salts. So keep in mind that DNA extraction techniques are numerous, and they may involve either organic extraction, such as the phenochloroform method that I've presented above, or a non-organic method, which involves salting out and proteinase K treatment, or adsorption methods, such as the silica membrane or mag magnetic beads. So how much can you recover from cells? So each 
cell cells are regular cells are diploid and which which means they have chromosomes from both mom and dad so they refer to as diploid so each diploid cell in a typical mammalian cell contains six picograms of dna now if you're looking at haploid cells so cells that only have one set of chromosomes and the, the only cells that have it in our body are your what i refer to germ cells and germ cells are your sperm and eggs so these have half of that and so instead of six picograms you have three picograms so let's say we've got about 5 to 10 million cells that we're extracting DNA from. Then theoretically, we can expect about 30 to 60 nanograms. So that's DNA. For RNA, you would actually get slightly different depending on the state of the cell. So whether the cell is quiescent, so not doing much, or replicating, or metabolic, metabolically active, you're going to have different levels of RNA in the cell. And so it will be different amounts of RNA when you extract it. But in general, you can expect 10 to 30 picograms of total RNA per cell. And that brings us to the end of how to extract DNA, well, nucleic acid from a cell. And I hope it was useful, so good luck and all the best with your extraction.